Written by Pippa Chorley and illustrated by Danny Deeptown. Hello everybody. I'm so pleased to be here today to read to you my new story, Stuffed. Do you like the front cover? Who can we spot? A duck, a pig, and a rabbit. I wonder what they're doing in this little girl's bed. This is Sam, everybody. Can you wave and say, hi, Sam? She looks a bit confused, doesn't she? And the duck seems to be a bit cross. And can you see rabbit's foot? What do you think he's doing there? Oh dear, they don't look like they're getting a lot of sleep, do they? Shall we open up the book and find out why? As Sam slept soundly in her bed, the night was still and black. Fluff the dog flip-flapped his wings and gave a mighty... <coughs> I've had enough, he shouted out. I almost want to weep. If Hop keeps kicking all night long, I'll never get to sleep. But Hop the rabbit twitched a toe and gave another kick. Your beak was sticking in my tum and making me feel sick. I have no room, said Fluff the duck. It's all because of Pig. His bottom's sticking in my back. It's clearly way too big. Oh dear. Well, it seems that our three fluffy stuffed toys are rather cross with each other, aren't they? We started with Fluff the Duck. Here he is, everybody. Do you want to say hello? He's shouting and quacking very loudly about poor Pop the Rabbit, who's right beside me here. Can you see his lovely pink fluffy tail? So he's complaining that Hop is kicking him and he can't sleep. And then Hop is blaming poor Pig here. They're all shouting at each other, aren't they? I wonder, whose fault do you think it is? Do you think it's anybody's fault at all? Do you think they're handling it very well? What would you do? if one of your friends was cross and started shouting at you. How would you handle it, I wonder? I want to snuggle next to Sam, but you're both in my way, said Pig the Pig to Fluff and Hop. I simply cannot stay. So up he got and trotted off to sleep alone instead. Then Fluff and Hop both turned their backs and also left the bed. Oh dear, poor Pig here is now feeling so upset that he doesn't even want to be near his friends anymore. He's got up off the bed and gone to sleep somewhere else instead. I feel rather sorry for Pig. If somebody said I had a big bottom, I'd be rather upset too. Wouldn't you? And worst of all, it's meant that everybody's so upset with all the shouting, they're all wanting to disappear to their own space and be alone. The toys continued through the night to huff and puff and scuff about Pig hogging all the space. But Pig winked back. It's fluff! When Sam awoke to play next day, she found her friends alone in every corner of her room, all lost and on their own. What has gone on? she asked her friends. Have you all had a fight? I know just what we have to do to make it fair tonight. 
So all the friends are now on their own in the bedroom, in their own space. Instead of being together as a family or as a group of friends. It's rather sad, isn't it? Can you see what pig's drawn as well? Sam, heart, pig. Oh dear, I don't think that's going to help the situation at all, do you? It's a bit exclusive and not very inclusive. Even Shep the sheep and the little pussycat look rather shocked at their behaviour. Can you see when Sam wakes up in the morning? The lamp has turned over. The box is tumbled apart. The clock has been knocked over. And look what the others have drawn on the board. That's not a very happy sight, is it? No wonder Sam looks so shocked. I wonder what's going to happen. All three of you can sleep down at the bottom of my bed. There's lots of room for each of you and cover too, Sam said. But in the night, the toys awoke and wanted Sam to cuddle. So each of them went bundling back into the same old huddle. So what did you all think of Sam's idea? I thought it was rather clever, don't you? If they're at the bottom of the bed, they're still with Sam. They're all together, got lovely cover and still comfy bedding. But they've also got their own space. But oh dear, it didn't work. They all ended back in the same old huddle and started arguing again. I wonder, do you think Sam's going to come up with another idea that's going to make everything better? Let's keep reading and find out. This just won't do, said Pig the Pig. You have to sleep elsewhere. As I'm the one who got here first, so move. It's only fair. There's nothing fair about it, Pig. It should be me, said Fluff. Because I'm the one that Sam loves most. Pig left them in a huff. Oh, that was mean, said Hop to Fluff. It really isn't true. Sam loves us all and all the same. Hop turned and bounced off too. So what do you all think of Pig's idea? That if you get somewhere first, then it's your spot and nobody else's. Well, if we're running a race, that's true, isn't it? But friends aren't really supposed to compete with each other. And they're definitely supposed to share space. So I'm not sure the pig was right. And on the next page, what do you think about what Fluff the Duck had to say? I'm the one that Sam loves most. Do you think that's true? Do you think it's mean? I think Hop here was the only one who had something sensible to say. Sam loves us all and all the same. It's a bit like your brothers and sisters. Our mummies and daddies and aunts and uncles and nanas and granddads all love their children equally, even though they're different. What do you think? When Sam awoke to play next day, she found her friends alone, all strewn across her bedroom floor, still sad and on their own. This has gone on for far too long. The toys lay still and huffed. We need to work this out, said Sam, or else we'll all be stuffed. Be kind and you can sleep with me. Just give each other space. There's room for all my friends, said Sam, but fighting has no place. Together, they devised a plan on which the friends agreed. 
all beaks and bottoms, claws and paws, were banned, it was decreed. So did you like Sam's idea and her lovely chalkboard chart? I bet you're familiar with that at school, maybe at home too. It's a bit like a behaviour chart, isn't it? That if you do these things or don't do these things, then you're going to move up. So at the moment they're all on a stormy cloud looking very miserable. But if they don't pinch and poke and bite and bump, and they speak kindly to each other, they get to move up to the next level and feel much happier too. So what they did is they made a plan, but they did it together. They all gave their own ideas and banned things that were hurtful. It was a good idea, wasn't it? Working together as a team. Definitely better than this disaster of a bedroom in the morning. No wonder Sam looks so upset. Look at her art cupboard. Her doll's house. And look on the chalkboard, can you see? Naughty Pig there has put himself in first place again. <clears throat> we know that's not right, don't we? I wonder if the toys are going to listen and follow their instructions in their plan. And will it work? Let's keep reading and see. Then as the day turned into night and Sam grew tired of play, she took her friends upstairs to bed to cuddle till next day. Pig fell asleep on her left side and hop slept on her right. Fluff nestled in Sam's silky hair and slept right through the night. When Sam awoke to play next day, she found her friends asleep. A hoof in claw and wing in paw, one giant loving heap. So did you like the end, everybody? It was happy, wasn't it? It worked their plan. Look at them all going up to bed. This is one of my favourite illustrations in the story that my lovely illustrator, Danny Deeptown, drew. It reminds me of my little girl going up to bed at night, cuddling her fluffy stuffed toys. And look at them all, doing just what they promised. Each in their own space, but still cosy next to Sam. But what I love even more is that when she wakes up, they're not strewn on the bedroom floor anymore. They're in one big pile, all loving one another, not caring about paws and beaks and claws and bottoms. It's a happy scene, isn't it? I hope you all enjoyed the story, everybody. I had so much fun reading it to you all. And I'm going to leave you with one last piece of advice before I go. Are you ready? Hello everyone. I'm really excited to be here today to teach you how to make your very own Play-Doh thick, just like this one. The first thing we have to do is separate out your Play-Doh into lots of different sections. One for the head, one for the body, but two for the legs, two for the arms, two for the feet, two for the ears, and one for the nose. A little bit extra for the tail and maybe some little details at the end. So let's do that first. So as you can see here, I've separated out the Play-Doh into lots of different segments. I have a head, a body, two legs, two arms, two feet, a nose, two ears and a tail. And I've got lots spare 
if I need to redo anything, add more Play-Doh or extra detail later. The only other tool I have with me is something that's got a curved end like the back of a spoon or a fork and a pointy end, maybe like the prong of a fork and two googly eyes. They're just for added detail and fun at the end. Now to make the body, we need a big piece that we're going to roll into a circle and then you're going to take one side of it and roll it a little bit more to make more of an egg shape. Can you see here? One section is nice and fat and round at the bottom and the top is a bit more pointy and thin, just like an egg or an oval if it was flat. Now it's time to place the head on top. Just push it down slightly and it will stick. Now if you're not quite sure how to make your balls of Play-Doh nice and smooth and round and fat, let me teach you. You need to take a piece of Play-Doh and give it a really good squish like this, almost like you're kneading dough. That will take out any of the cracks and make it nice and moist and malleable. Then, when you feel like it's got most of the crumbly bits out, you can start to pat it into your palm of your hand. Can you see mine are going nice and pink with the dye? I think we used a bit too much red, don't you? So once we've got it patted into our hand in a sort of ball shape, we're going to smooth it out by rolling it. I need one very flat palm that stays still, another flat palm that moves in circles all around the bottom palm. Can you see? That's a lovely shape now. Perfect. Now it's time to attach the arms. So this time, instead of being in a ball, I want it more like a sausage shape. So I need to flatten my hand out and roll my palm along my Play-Doh until it becomes nice and fat and long, just like a sausage. Now, because he's got trotters as he's a pig, I'm going to just push down the back of a spoon at the end to make a dent. Can you see? And then we'll attach that at the side like that. Now it's time to add the legs. Again, squish your Play-Doh up, roll it into a nice ball, just the same as you did with the head and the body. And then you're going to roll it out a bit like your arms as a sausage shape again. This one's breaking up. Let's try that again. There we go, rolling it out, just like that. And then we're going to attach that at the side. Okay, and we'll do the same with the second one. Now this time we don't have to put a little mark on it like we did with the arms, because we're going to do that on the feet instead. And we'll make him trotter-tastic. Okay. And there we go. Now he has some legs as well.
Now it's time to add the feet. Roll two small balls. Now taking the flat of your thumb, press down gently just a little bit. So you end up with two fat discs. And just like you did with the arms, you're going to make a little mark here. Can you see on this one? Also, I pinched the end a little bit, like that. So it's a bit more like a teardrop shape. Let's put one here. And one here. Yeah. And now he's got four lovely trotters. Now it's time to make the most important bit of the pig his snout. So we need again another ball. Roll it nice and smooth. And like you did with the uh, feet, you're going to flatten your ball into a disc. This needs a bit more squishing together. There we go. Feels better. Push it down. Now taking your sharp pointed object, something safe like a fork from, you're going to make two holes in your disc. Can you see here? One, two. Now it's time to put your beautiful piggy nose onto his face like this. What do you think? Now if you want to give your piggy a nice smile, let's just lift him up. You're going to take your spoon or fork and just run it in a moon shape underneath his piggy nose. Can you see here, he's got a lovely smile now. He's almost looking ready. He just needs some ears and eyes. Shall we make those now? So to make the ears, again, two small balls, lots of rolling in making Play-Doh animals, especially little round fat piggies. Once you've rolled it, you're going to push down a little bit, like we did with the trotters and his nose, and then you're going to pinch at one side till you get another teardrop shape like that. Take your sharp object and push down almost like you would to make the stem or of the leaf. You're going to do that twice and then fix his ears on top with a little bit of water. So now your piggy is almost done, we need to add his eyes. So if you do have a bit of white, it's great to use it now. If you don't, it doesn't matter. This is just for a little bit of added pop. Make two small balls, press down, and add them just above the nose and below the ears where you want your eyes to go. And it will help give a little bit of extra pop when you stick your eyes on. Now it's time to add your googly eyes. And you're going to literally just place them onto your white or directly on the face if you didn't have any white. Push them down a little bit, and he's almost done. We just need to put one more bit of detail on. 
And that's the tail. Now remember how we made the sausage shape with a long movement with your palm rolling on the table. We have to do that again, but this time we have to make it a little bit thinner than we did for the feet. Oh, Play-Doh is breaking up a bit. So again, you can add a tiny bit of water to moisten it back up or squish it and roll it again with more hands. There we go, it's perfect. And you've got a lovely long tail. You can curl it. Just like a real piggy tail. Like this, can you see? A little corkscrew and squish it onto his bottom at the back. So now your piggy has a lovely piggy tail, I'm going to add a final detail. This isn't necessary, but if you do have a little bit of extra Play-Doh, it's quite fun to give your piggy a belly button. So again, roll a little ball, flatten it with the back of your thumb, and then when you pop it on, you can add a little belly button hole on top. And now your piggy is complete with ears, a nose, arms, legs and feet, a belly button, eyes, and a super tail at the back. Doesn't he look fabulous? I hope you have lots of fun making your very own Play-Doh piglet. I really enjoyed teaching you how to do it. Do send me photographs onto my website if you'd like to share with me your wonderful creations. Bye for now.